This is Malik Kahook from the University of Colorado, and the topic today is uveitis glaucoma hyphema syndrome in this edition of One Slide in Five Minutes. Uveitis glaucoma hyphema syndrome, also known as UGH syndrome, is a secondary inflammatory glaucoma classically related to an intraocular lens haptic and or optic rubbing on anterior chamber uveal and vascular structures, frequently involving the posterior surface of the iris and surrounding tissues. UGH syndrome is more likely to occur when squared edged haptics, a design feature of most single piece acrylic lenses commercialized today, are placed in the sulcus. You can see an image of that on endoscopy with a haptic sitting in the sulcus. Here's the anterior portion of the capsular bag and the haptic is clearly outside of the capsular bag and sitting in the sulcus. Complications are less likely to occur with rounded PMMA, PVDF, or polypropylene haptics, which are found in three-piece IOL designs. UGH syndrome may also be associated with poorly sized anterior chamber IOLs and iris or scleral fixated IOLs when the haptics come in direct contact with the posterior surface of the iris, iris root, and vascular tissues proximate to the sulcus. With anterior chamber IOLs, remember that the proper size of the lens is obtained by using the horizontal corneal white-to-white -white distance and adding one millimeter. It is important to note that in-the-bag IOLs may also cause UGH syndrome when the bag is unstable, allowing for contact with adjacent tissues. UGH syndrome is classically associated with the triad of chronic inflammation, recurrent bleeding, and iris transillumination defects with associated elevated intraocular pressure and occasional iris neovascularization and cystoid macular edema. The patient may present with complaints of episodic blurring of vision due to repeated hyphemas, photophobia, red eye, and pain. Ultrasound biomicroscopy is helpful to determine position of the IOL, and you can see here a UBM image with a tilted optic on the intraocular lens and the haptic sitting posterior to the iris and in the sulcus as opposed to the opposite side haptic, which is sitting in the capsular bag. It is important to note that UBM can often indicate a position of the haptic and or optic against specific ocular structures like the iris, but is not definitive evidence that the lens is out of the capsular bag since capsular bags may be compromised and may still allow for tilting and contact with adjacent structures despite the eye well being entirely within the capsular bag. Gonioscopy is essential to determine presence of blood that may not be visible without direct view of the angle. The level of angle pigmentation, look for distribution of pigment in all quadrants, and examine meticulously for any possible tumors that may mimic UGH syndrome should also be noted as seen here in the bottom figure. Gonioscopy is also key to identify any neovascularization of the iris or the angle which can be a feature of chronic UGH syndrome, but may also indicate presence of neovascular glaucoma, which can mimic UGH syndrome. Elevation in intraocular pressure can occur due to all factors noted above, with both physical plugging of the trabecular meshwork from pigment, blood, and inflammatory cells, as well as direct mechanical destruction of the trabecular meshwork from compression and or rubbing against IOL structures. The differential diagnosis includes uveitic glaucoma, traumatic hyphema, neovascular glaucoma, anterior segment tumors, and pigment dispersion glaucoma. From a treatment standpoint, practice pattern changes shifting from anterior to posterior intraocular lenses, enhanced IOL haptic and optic design features, use of modern acrylic materials, and improved surgical techniques have all led to a decrease in incidence of UGH syndrome from around 3% to currently around 0.4%. Treatment includes IOP lowering medications while avoiding myotics, which can increase contact between the iris and the intraocular lens. Steroids to treat inflammation, plus or minus non-steroidal drops, can also be used, especially in the setting of cystoid macular edema. The definitive treatment involves surgical repositioning or exchange of the intraocular lens. Combining glaucoma surgery with IOL repositioning or exchange is often a hard issue to address and must consider the specific patient as well as the overall staging of glaucoma, along with clinical examination of the angle to ascertain likelihood of the drainage system recovering over time. Consider visiting keogt.com for further educational material. This video and other educational videos can be found on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for your time.